Hi guys, so today I'm going to be talking about self catheterizing tips. This was originally going to be a video about how to reduce infections, but I spoke too much <laughs> and it's now going to be split into two videos. So I'm not sure if there will be mention of that when I cut to the next clip, but if there is, that's why it was originally going to be one long video, but I've actually split it into two. So in my last video, we discussed how to find the right place and, and that video was very heavily focused on using a mirror. So we talked about how to use a mirror on the toilet and also how to use a mirror just in general, say on a hospital bed or, you know, wherever. And I also talked about how to make it less painful and more easy. So all of that will be in this video, which will be linked up here. And then in today's video, we're going to be talking about when to use a numbing gel, catheter sizes, and also how to catheterize based on feeling. So moving away from the mirror, and often this enables people to do it on the toilet or in their wheelchair and just gives them a lot more freedom with it. So how to do it based on feeling. The first thing you want to do is figure out how it feels for you. So you just want to carry on doing it in the way that you've been taught to do it and you want to really think about what that feeling feels like for you. For me, it really isn't pleasant and for me the feeling is pain. And so when it comes to doing it based on feeling myself, I will have the catheter and as I explained in my last video, my last video about this, <laughs> not my last video in general, I always try to put the catheter slightly above where I think it's going to go, as in like a millimetre above, and then just ever so slightly slide down, and that will limit how often, <laughs> that will limit how often you go in the wrong place, because you can't go too wrong above, but you can go very wrong <laughs> below. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the same tip as the last video. But then because you're doing it based on feeling, you want to be thinking in your mind, when does it feel like the feeling you're used to? So for me, it's pain. And this is going to sound horrible, but I put the catheter where I think it's going to go. And if it's painful, I know I'm in the right place and I push through the pain. Thankfully, it only lasts a split second. Um, it doesn't last the whole time. It's not like the pain continues for me thankfully but it is a painful feeling and I know that when I feel pain I, I just have to continue because that is how it feels for me. Hopefully for some of you the sensation won't be pain it will just be a familiar sensation and you will know when to keep doing it. My biggest tip as well would be if you get it wrong I was going to say if you get it majorly wrong but every time you get it wrong you have to throw the catheter away and use a new one because otherwise you will be transferring bacteria from the wrong area inside your body and you really don't want to do that. So I know it doesn't sound like a big tip where I'm just saying, oh, think about the feeling and just follow the feeling, but actually it is easier than you think. I used to think that because it was tricky, even with a mirror, I was like, well, how on earth am I gonna find it without? But actually you just do, you just get used to doing it. <laughs> It's sounding like a silly tip to me, but this was a eureka moment. Is that the right word? I've got brain fog, so I wouldn't know. But it was a moment where everything clicked when I started doing that. And also don't be scared to get it wrong and to go through, say, four catheters when you're learning, because it's all part of the process and it's not always going to take you as many attempts as it takes in the beginning. So just put it where you think it's going to go and um, yeah base it on the feeling you can go slightly up and slightly down with the same catheter but especially if you go in the wrong hole you're going to have to throw that catheter away and get a new one or if you can just feel that you've been prodding in the wrong place you're going to have to throw it away and get a new one but hopefully it won't take you too long to put it in the right place get the familiar feeling and then continue with it and that should work. <laughs> that should work. 
My next tip is about when to use a numbing gel. So a lot of people will recommend a numbing gel, especially doctors or other people that catheterize. But one thing that's important to note is that the numbing gel does really sting. And so if you're using it to make this whole process less painful, it's a bit of a balancing act. So for me, for example, catheterizing is painful for about a second. It's almost like there's one part of my body that is painful and once I get past it, I'm fine. And it's the same after I take the catheter out. It's like a split second where it's painful again. Because it's a split second of pain, it would not be worth me injecting this. When I say inject, it's a syringe. It's not a needle, but it stings really bad for me. And so in cases like mine, where you don't get that much pain and the pain isn't for too long, I wouldn't recommend using it. And also if you're easy to catheterize as well, I wouldn't recommend using it because I think you're just going to increase the amount of pain you have. I don't think it's going to make it any easier. But if you're someone who's difficult to catheterize, so it's taking you a long time to get that catheter in and you're going through a lot of pain over an extended period of time, I think it would be worth using it because it works as a lubricant. It does numb the area eventually. But because it stings to start with, it is a thing to like weigh up the risk. So for me, the numbing gel hurt just as much as the catheter itself. And so there would be no point me using it. Um, when I talk about pain, I'm, I'm mainly thinking about the length of time. So my pain from catheterizing is actually severe. Like I would call it severe but I still wouldn't use the numbing gel because I'm not in pain for very long and the numbing gel would just double it. But if you're really struggling and it's taking you a long time to get that catheter in, it's worth a shot. You can try it and if it's not for you, you don't have to continue with it. But I did want to mention that it can be painful because I had no idea that a numbing gel with no needles involved and something that's meant to numb the pain can actually cause the pain. Like the first time I got it, I was in hospital and they did it. And because I wasn't expecting it, I instinctively curled up and <laughs> threw a ball. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I wasn't expecting that. And the nurse was like, oh yeah, I should have warned you. It does sting. So yeah, something to think about. Definitely not for everyone, but there are cases where it can be helpful. Moving on from that, again, for people that are finding it really hard to catheterize, it can be helpful to know that standard catheters typically come in a size 12. It's called, I'm pretty sure it's called 12 French, but you just need to know the number. 12 is a standard size. If you're really struggling and you can't get the catheter in, you can talk to your nurses and doctors and ask for a smaller size. There are pediatric sizes and I think there are also adult sizes in a 10 and an eight. So you might find it helpful to use one of those smaller sizes. And now we've reached a part of the video where we talk about reducing infections. And then my final tips to reduce infections are very generic and basic. And that is to make sure you're always washing your hands very well, always washing the area very well. And you want to do it in that order as well. Wash your hands, then wash the area and that will limit um, bacteria. You also, if possible, would want to use a catheter where you don't have to touch the part that's going inside your body. So something like this is perfect because you don't need to touch this at any time. And that's really going to limit the amount of bacteria that enters the body. And then as I discussed before, with every attempt, so if you put it in the wrong place, you have to just discard the catheter and get a new one. Otherwise, that will lead to infections as well. And then I also wanted to say that you can do everything right. You can do all of those things and still get infections. And <laughs> I don't know what to say, like they are just inevitable. So don't let anyone lead you to believe that this is your fault. Because I had a nurse once tell me that because... I was getting a bladder installation and that's where they put a medication into your bladder and the lady said to me 
it's not possible to get an infection with this bladder installation so why have you got one and I didn't know what to say because I was like I don't know I don't know like I can't express how careful and how many precautions I take and it's not just me it's is actually everyone I know that catheterizes struggles with infections. So please don't think that this is your fault if you're struggling with it. It's a catheter thing, it's not a you thing. You could get a doctor or a nurse who also doesn't understand and tries to put the blame on you. Just know that they're, they're inevitable and it's not your fault. They may make you think it is, but it's not. Um, and in those cases, I would challenge them, like knowing everything I know now, if I had a nurse say to me, why are you having so many infections? I would say, well, this is what I'm using. This is what I was advised to use. What do you recommend? Like, how can I make this better? I really started to go off on a tangent there, but I'll leave that there before I ramble anymore. I'm sure this video is already really long, but thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Give this video a like if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.